Sure, you've heard tensions continue to escalate in the Middle East as Israel and Palestinian militants are exchanging fire throughout the night. Professor and political analyst Rick Epps joining us to explain what's going on. Rick, good morning. Always good to see you. Good morning, Shelley. Great to see you. We, we have had you on the show um, time after time after time, and it seems like we're always talking about some type of tension in the Middle East, depending on the countries. They like rotate. What is happening uh, now? Well, you know, this is it's an ongoing battle, right? This is the you know, Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip has been a point of contention for decades and decades. Uh, this latest escalation really stems from primarily from the possibility of the uh, eviction of uh, Palestinian uh, residents from an area or neighborhood in Israel called Sheikh Jafar, uh, Jahar, uh, excuse me, Jarrah, and uh, so this uh, and also the attacks, uh, it starts from there and then that starts to escalate people, uh, the Palestinians protest and the Israelis respond to the protest with uh, some heavy handed action. Rocket fire is then uh, uh, pushed by the by Hamas. Uh, they gave the Israeli Defense Force a deadline of, of 6 p.m. to the night to, to be able to get out and they didn't. Hamas executed uh, rocket fire. And then Israel responds, and of course, as you know, we have uh, more than 500 people have been injured, and over 20 have been killed, and uh, it's a it's a mess. And uh, the the Al uh, Aqsa Mosque community, which was which was uh, had center of the attack, is one of the holiest sites uh, in Islam, or for Muslims, I should say. And then also, it's also one of the holiest site areas for for Jews as well. So it's a obviously a continued point of contention. And you talk about some of these uh, people who died. There are reports that there are children among those uh, who are dead. It's it's usually innocent people who get caught in this uh, crossfire, and it's the innocent people who then turn to the rest of the world and they say from both sides, help. Yeah. yeah, well, this is where the problem comes in, because when people say, well, who's to blame, right? And you're going, well, I mean, there's blame on both sides. And then the idea is, uh, for example, just to say, so the currently the Israel is reaching back to a 1970 law that was instituted that basically said that prior to the to 1948 War of Independence, that the land belonged to them before that. So and so that the occupied territories are still resident are still belong to them. And so this is an ongoing long term battle. And the victims are always the, the, the innocent civilians in this. And basically, Hamas and the Israeli Defense Force basically are the ones, you know, with all the who are allowing the collateral damage. And again, it's always the innocents that suffer the most. We have a new president in office, a new administration. How uh, will things need to be handled now? What is the expectation from President Biden now? Well, this is interesting because it, it certainly sets up for him to have to take a stand on his uh, foreign policy regarding the Middle East and in this particular area because there are there are risks, obviously. I mean, obviously, the United States has always historically supported Israel. And the question is, how far is is Biden going to go to respect that and continue that, uh, or is he going to offer a potential olive branch uh, to uh, to the Palestinians, who are still trying to, of course, they want to they want to they want to occupy a land of their own, and so the idea is they wanted that area to be theirs, and so you know, and Netanyahu has said, I'm you know we're not going to you know basically we're going to do what we have to do to protect it and. You know, he was, he has rejected uh, the pressure to uh, to build uh, in in East East Jerusalem, and so uh, Biden is going to have to utilize all of his diplomatic tools. Uh, but it's also going to set the framework not, not only for the United States, but for international uh, uh, agencies and and other countries to also bring uh, pressure to bear on both of these entities to be able to de to calm down this uh, or de-escalate this situation. I know a lot uh, goes on the United States. People turn to the United States a lot to help, but the international community, like you were just uh, talking about right now, uh, there is some expectation for them to step in, neighboring countries, allies on the other side to help as well, uh, to help de-escalate. Is this possible, you think, in the coming days? 
Well, historically, you know, there are always ebbs and flows, right? So they'll escalate, then they'll de-escalate when there's a when there's some pressure being brought to bear. Very, you know, and it, that always happens behind closed doors. Usually, it requires, a, you know, a olive branch on one side and or and, and the other. So the United States will use its diplomatic tools and also the other allies of Israel within Europe and other parts that will also deal with this. The danger is that in this is that you have other entities that are looking for looking for the fight, right? So there are other countries like Turkey and Iran and other places that have said in Syria that are basically supporting, you know, the, the attacks uh, against Israel. So, you know, the idea is to sort of quell the, the, the rhetoric of, of those who are looking for the fight and then also be able to continue diplomatic efforts, uh, utilizing your allies and utilizing the United Nations. And of course, the Security Council has been meeting to try and get this dealt with. No one wants the regional instability because they know potentially what that can lead to. So this is something we've got to get our, get our hands on. And normally we do, and, ho and hopefully the, it may continue for a while, but hopefully you know, the danger, the long-term danger is getting back to you know suicide attacks and things like mm -hmm. that. That's the thing you don't want to see happen. And uh, in radicalizing more young Young people to, to against both sides, and that's what we don't want to see happen in this situation. We don't. All right, Rick Epps, always good to see you. Thank you. Great to see you too, Shelley.